Thugs on in the lab, niggas done got bougie on Can we smoke a doobie, homie? Nigga back a funk Like the old days, old school old days Let the rock roll out, cold play I finesse a bitch with the game Like cold train Get loose behind the tent Can't nobody see These is five percent You know how it be out in these streets Flow master sitting on some 90 front, 90 back. What they do? What they do, royalty? Y'all know what time it is, man. Mindset Monday, man. Mindset Monday. You feel me? Just letting some more people come in, playing some of this Black Lotus music. You know what I'm talking about? What they do, OG501? What they do? How was your weekend? Queen Meticulous, what they do? How your day going, Queen? In the rain with the gods and the Risha's. Yeah, how was y'all weekend? How was y'all holiday? How did it go for y'all? Where y'all was at? I was in Tennessee and Atlanta. Where y'all was at this weekend? What y'all thankful for? What y'all thankful for? What y'all grateful for? I know y'all alive, y'all breathing. Y'all on the live right now, so that's something to be grateful and thankful for. You feel me? You got air in your lungs and life in your body. You woke up another day, so you here. That's something to be grateful and thankful for. What y'all grateful and thankful for? I conquer fitness. What they do, what they do. Don't beat me up. I ain't, co- I ain't come this morning. I ain't come this morning. I'm be there in the morning, man. You know, I'm, I'm getting it back together. Hey, if you're not following I conquer fitness, go follow I conquer fitness. Make sure you sign up. They got the holiday specials. They got the New Year specials. Make sure you follow I Conquer Fitness, Splack Fitness. Um, uh, yeah, man. Make sure y'all follow my guy, man, Splack Williams, man. He gonna get you right. He been getting me right. I promise, man. He worked for, like, the CIA, man, with them torture tactics he be having early morning, man. You feel me? But it's all in the name of good wealth, good health, good wealth, health is wealth. Y'all know how that goes. Y'all know how that goes. Yeah, man, we gonna get into this Mindset Monday today. I got a good topic for y'all today. A good, good topic for y'all today. The topic is... um, Yeah, I'm about to get into the topic right now. I know y'all be like, oh, what's the topic for today? The topic for today is... Comparison is the theft of joy. Orlando, King Orlando, what they do, man. Hit me up in the DM, man. How you coming along in your progress and your process, man? Hit me up, man. Keep me posted with that. Um, today's topic is comparison is the theft of joy. Now, we cannot, and it's difficult because I'm, you know, we're gonna get transparent today, but you, we cannot look at somebody else's, um, elaborate on that. Okay, yeah, I'm about to. So, we can't look at somebody's chapter 10 and compare it to our chapter 1. We can't do that. We can't look at somebody who has 10 trucks on the road and compare it to you trying to get one truck up on the road. Or... Somebody who's making, you know, so much money or has this much stocks or whatever the case may be. And you're just starting up and you're just learning about the particular topic compared to somebody who's been doing it, actively doing it for a while. And or also everything happens in seasons as well, too. So you don't plant, you don't um, you don't plant and you don't harvest within the same season so we be sometimes we can look at some people's harvest season and get discouraged or compare it to your planting season that's a big thing we can't do that and let me tell you like I said we're gonna get transparent I have to take my own advice as well too you know what I'm saying because I sometimes look at others harvest season and compare it to my sowing season straight up and down. Um, 
So we can't, Sunny Speaks, what they do. If y'all not following Sunny Speaks, the best vegan chef in the world, make sure y'all follow her at Sunny Speaks. Man, I just, hey, I just killed the rest of that plate today. Me and Charlie killed that for dinner. Man, it was uh, fire, man. She had the, the vegan ham, the vegan pot roast, the rice and peas, the, the collard greens, string beans. It was fire. But um, I digress. We cannot compare somebody's harvest season to our sowing season. Comparison is the theft of joy. And like I said, I'm going to be transparent. You know what I mean? I was in Tennessee looking at Pocky and Trapper on the yacht like, God damn, man. You feel what I'm saying? They on the yacht on some Puff Daddy shit and I'm in Tennessee in the cold, right? Uh, That's a collection plate. So, you know, like I said, I'll be transparent. I was with the fam, you know, so I couldn't make it. I wasn't there or whatnot. But at the same time, that didn't stop me from looking like, damn, boy, I want to be on the yacht too. You know what I'm saying? Or looking at somebody else who got 10 trucks out on the road and you like, damn, I'm just trying to start up. You know, comparison is the theft of joy. We have to trust the process, but we also we also have to be cognizant and uh, take pride and joy in the small steps and the small accomplishments and the small goals. No, you can't look at somebody else's chapter 10 and see where they're at and they're harvesting right now. You're still sowing and you uh, neglecting your small victories. You neglecting, hey, I did save $20 or I I invested $20 in the stock uh, this week or this month or whatever your budget is. But you looking at somebody else who put $2,000 in the stock and now you're getting discouraged. You can't compare that. You know what I mean? And when you do, that deals with your mindset, your mind state, and it can take your joy and happiness away. And we can't be in that position. You know, Instagram is a highlight reel. It's very often people show the bloopers in their Instagram. It's very often you don't see the back, the back uh page or you know behind the curtain of what's going on so you never know what's going on in someone else's life you feel what I'm saying um so how do you balance it out well I'm still I ain't even gonna lie and sit here and say that I just got it all figured out like that to be honest with you um royalty I'm still working on that you know I what I do and it might be fucked up, I ain't gonna lie. What I do is I think about think about others that may not be in a position that I'm in. I'm gonna give you an example. So, no, I'm not on the yacht in Miami with them boys, right? But I am with my family. I'm with my mom, I'm with my sister. I'm with my daughter. Well, I know some people that's behind the wall who would love the opportunity just to spend some time with their children or their significant other or their siblings, right? And like I said, that might be a fucked up, you know, way of looking at things. Queen, Queen uh, GMJ, what they do. Um, that might be a messed up way of looking at things. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, it might be fucked up, but that's that's my little method. You know what I'm saying? Like. Well, Dan, you know what? I am, you know, I, I am grateful because it's others in the position. It's, it's people who didn't wake up this morning. It's people who, you know, got 23 and one lockdown. You know, you know, um, I got a friend who don't come home till uh, 2021. Good friend of mine. You know what I'm saying? And what he would give to just be with his brother and kick it or or be with his son or not have to see his son behind a glass or with guards or stuff like that. So, you know, I think of situations like that and say, well, dang, you know what? I am grateful. You know, I am grateful. I got a roof over my head. I have property, I have stocks. Is it as much property as I want? No. Is it as uh, a large, diverse portfolio as I would like to have or as I'm striving for now? No, but at the same time, it's more, it's something that's better than nothing, right? Miss Moneybag, what they do? I know you freezing up there, man. I know you freezing up there where you at, queen. 
So that's how that's how I kind of look at the situation. And like I said, let me know, let me know what they do, cuz um one time for I am a ratio, man. What they do, man. I heard you out there in London, man. I heard you having a cup of tea, mate. Roll a roll up a Jeffrey, mate. Heard you over there in the UK, mate, for a spell, you know, down yonder across the across the big pond, you know, mate. Shout out to Cuz, man. I love it, man. You doing your thing out there in the UK, man. I love it. I love Oh, Dubai. Excuse me. Excuse me. All praises do, hum, do I lie. You in Dubai now. That's what I'm talking about, King. I love to see that, man. My young Cuz doing his thing, man. Straight up and down. So that's the mindset. That's the mindset that um that that I have or the things that I think about to keep me from just going in a state of depression because I'm not in a harvest season like some of my other peers, you know, or I'm not in a position. But like I said, I'm also in a better position than others, but it's that's what the whole comparison is a theft of joy. You gotta be comfortable where you at because you're where you're at. You're, you're where you're supposed to be right now, you know? Even though it may not be where you want to be, where, you know, you're not where you're trying to go, but also realize this too. Once, you know, we're insatiable as human beings, to be honest with you. So you have a goal, but once you attain that goal, if you, you know, you become, you can become complacent. And most individuals who are entrepreneurs have the entrepreneur mindset, the ambitious hustler go get it business mindset it's always about reaching that goal and now it's expanding it's scaling you hear entrepreneurs talk about scaling a lot as well too so you know you never gonna be at a place of comfortability if that makes sense especially dealing with business because business is never usually goes the way you think it's gonna go or it should go you know, uh, I was having a conversation with uh, a good friend of mine today, Works Drive Brian, and <clears throat> he was saying to me that, you know, no matter how much, let's say, dojo work, what they do, what they do, royalty, no matter how much dojo work that you put in and you go through the process, take the right steps or the steps in a particular blueprint or structure, we, we don't dictate the outcome. That's one thing, we don't dictate the outcome. Now, at the same time, the best way to predict the future is to create it. At the same time, we don't predict the outcome. So nine times out of 10, it's never gonna go the way you planned it to be. It's never gonna go that way. But enjoying the ride is part of the process as well too. And that's difficult. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all, that's even difficult for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, the ups and downs, you know, not getting too high on the ups and not getting too low on the downs. You're never as great, you're never as good or as bad as they say you are. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta keep that mindset. We gotta keep that even kill mindset. And I'm not gonna lie, that's a little difficult. Like I said, we getting tra I'm getting transparent today on Mindset Monday, but that's difficult for me. I'm a water sign, I'm a Pisces, my birthday is February 20th, shout out. I'm gonna be 39, yo. Straight up and down. I know like, I like, dang, how old this nigga is? Y'all see the grays and shit like that. Y'all know I cut the beard off. I look, you know what I'm saying, in my 20s and shit like that. But yeah, man, February 20th, I'm gonna be 39. And um, I'm a water sign, going back to what I say. So it's easy. I'm an emotional being altogether. <laughs> oh, man. Distinguished man. You dig it? Distinguished man. But, um, you know, for me, I could get, I could get, uh, tied into the lows, you know, on the being, being a water sign, being an emotional creature, you know, I could get tied into the lows and even, even, uh, gone off the highs at times. So I too, myself and working on the even kill situation, like, okay, we made progress. I'm not going to be so wrapped up in that progress. Or, okay, it was a loss, it was a lesson, or it didn't go as planned. All right, I'm not going to get so down on it. I'm not going to let it ruin my day. I'm not going to let it ruin my week. I'm not going to let it ruin my month. 
And like I say, I'm still working on it myself too, you know? It's so much highs and lows that come with uh, on this journey or this path to success, uh, you know, passive income business. You know, it's a lot to it. It's a lot of dojo work. It's a lot of trial and error. Even if you go ahead and pay for courses, mentorships, it's still not going to go exactly the way it's planned. Did something happen in your life to bring you to the point you are at now of investing? Um, yes. Um, I, um, I went to school, got two degrees, bachelor's, master's degree, and my master's degree is in business. And I noticed that a lot of the professors had never run a successful business before. A lot of the professors uh, and the curriculum did not teach about uh, passive income or investing and things of that nature. And I says, well, my mom worked 18 years at American Express before being laid off outsourcing. My dad was a, a chef, then he retired, got too old to perform in the kitchen. So it's like, okay, well, you know, at what point uh, do things change or what needs to be studied, what needs to be looked at in order to, to implement some type of change? Why is it that uh, when I was going to school in college, going back and forth to school and to work, random Tuesdays, you know, other other hue individuals, if you will, in the middle of the week is playing volleyball and hack and sack and, you know, beanbag and shit like that. And I got I, none of my friends, me or none of my friends got the luxury of doing this on a weekday, even though we're in college. We got class to go to. After class, we got to go to work. We got to pay these bills. We got to do this. We got to do that. How is this possible? So, it, uh, you know, it put me on a journey in searching. Queen Molly, what they do, what they do. Um, it put me on this journey of searching. So that's when I started reading uh, reading Unfair Advantage. A lot of people reference Robert Kiyosaki book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But the book that his book for me was Unfair Advantage. And he talked about the real estate and different things. What they do, family, what they do. That's a Hood of States elite family in the building right there. Queen Molly, man. Make sure y'all check her out. Um, so, you know, the Unfair Advantage book was what set it off for me. And this is before I knew Hood of States, Pocky. I didn't know. I didn't know any of the circle at the time, right? My cousin who was locked up, he out now. But uh, he was locked up and he put me on the Unfair Advantage by Robert Kiyosaki. So that was the first book that that started opening my eyes. From there, uh, Perched a Duplex, House Hacking, currently still House Hacking, um, and looking to get another property and then get into different, you know, business aspects and things of that nature. So that's basically what got me to the point because I was just like, yo, you know, a job, you know, I already wasn't good at, you know, keeping jobs I didn't had a million jobs I got a problem with authority whatever you want to call it or whatever plus I'm a creative as well I'm just creative by nature so you know I was doing music for a long time too so and that's really like my passion and now I'm learning different things to monetize music and stuff but I put it to the side to get on this uh, path of financial freedom and it's levels to this financial freedom shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Have a job, but no, I don't think I'm gonna be in Bali with, you know what I'm saying, a whole lot of other people doing it on a, on a higher, you know, a larger level than I'm doing it right now. But um, I hope I answered that question, you know what I'm saying? It was a combination of school, uh, books, and watching my environment that got me in to, to the point that I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm still working. I'm still working like we all are. I'm still a work in progress and I'm still working on building um, my platform, my knowledge, my investments, my portfolios, my streams of income, you know? So that's where I'm at with it right now. Um, 
let me ask y'all a question what what streams of income are y'all working on <clears throat> thanks for that helps that you can relate to the struggle oh yeah i could definitely relate to the struggle like you know you've been following me for a while you know what i'm saying i you know what i'm saying I, I moved around i moved around this year you know what i'm saying but um at the same time um i i got to be around a lot of great individuals and i'm around and created a tribe of individuals on a lot of different levels that help put me to it robin hood acorns rental property okay so yeah what's what's some of y'all streams of income that y'all have or y'all working on so queen meticulous says um that she got robin hood acorns and rental property there goes three streams right there three streams properties trucks stocks currently prioritizing okay okay so you're learning forex okay so when you say uh currently uh prioritizing queen molly uh how do you balance red goddess what they do what they do uh how do you how do you prioritize that that's because that's that's something that i'm dealing with as well too you know what i'm saying wealth capture account set up through my financial advisor okay okay i like that too wealth capture account okay i like that um you can't keep running to every shiny thing mm, mm, interesting that need to be my topic matter of fact we might have to we might have to do a a, 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 a mindset monday live on just that topic alone because that's real I'm working on the rental properties now with Foot Estates. Okay, okay, where you looking to invest in? You you at the crib, right? You in uh, Miami? You looking to get down there? You looking to do something like Cleveland or uh, Detroit, the Midwest? Um, and with that, do you do you say okay? Well, I'm gonna put the truck aside until I get the rental property. Then I'm gonna get the truck, or do you do a little bit of rental property, a little bit of truck, and let them both build up at, at the same time? Is my question. And uh, Queen Meticulous, same thing for you. You got the Acorns is one stream. You got the Robin Hood is another stream. You got the rental property is another stream. You got the wealth capture count is another stream. So you talk about four or five different streams. How do you prioritize the different streams and uh, deal with it as far as working on it? I'm in Miami, but I'm looking at Cleveland with Cousin Nita and Jacksonville with Hood Estates. Okay, okay. So that's the uh, about 40K range and getting the uh, rental property. What they do who just jumped in. I haven't touched my trucking course. That's on ice for now. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I got another good question for you. Because you know, I'm, Hood Estates gives so much information. It's, it's just so hard to... You know what I'm saying? Culminated out. Uh, the Welp Capture and the Acorns account, I set it and forget about it. Okay. Okay. So you put those, so you set those, forget about it. And then so you focus on the Robin Hood and the rental property while the other ones is just in the cut. Um, dang. Uh, that's what I was asking you, Queen Meticulous. And Queen Molly, my question for you was what made you pick the rental property to focus on first before the trucking course? Um, and I, and I, I'm just asking because I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, is there a reason why you went the rental property or is focusing on the rental property first opposed to the trucking? Um, the rentals, I have to research to see which property will work best for my situation. Okay. Meanwhile, steady saving my money in my TD Ameritrade account until I can get a real session with Trapper. Okay, okay, okay. So you working, okay. I see what you're doing, Queen Molly. I see what you're doing, Queen Meticulous. Okay, diversifying that portfolio. Maybe because I'm um, a licensed realtor, I went with what I'm most comfortable with. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't. I, excuse me. Excuse. I. 
I didn't know. I didn't know. Are you a... Uh, what kind of realtor are you, Queen? Let me see. The Robin Hood, I follow Wall Street Choppers for a week scenario. Okay, that's a good scenario. That's a good scenario. You know, Traps, traps Fam. You know what I'm saying? Traps Fam. Um, yeah, and, you know, yeah, Trapper's going, you know, he's going to bust down the whole pack with you with the stocks and everything like that. You know, I'm just, I stick to my dividend stocks, let them pay me quarterly or monthly. You know what I'm saying? Trapper's going to break down the whole metaphysical, metalogical science behind it. Everything and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Wall Street Trapper. Um, Work Strive Grind, what they do. If y'all not following Work Strive Grind, man, make sure y'all go follow Work Strive Grind, the Hustlers Workshop, flipping real estate in exotic cars and shows you how to turn uh exotic cars into assets as well too man make sure y'all follow work strive grinding got the hustlers workshop if y'all follow me i'll see i uh post this stuff a lot as well too repost it um queen molly question for you on the realtor side um are you a investor friendly realtor or are you a like a homeowner homeowner friendly realtor that's a good question because i just while i'm learning I'm learning in real estate as well myself as well too, right? But I'm learning that, you know, you have some realtors that are geared towards like first-time homeowners and, you know, who use the banks and VA loans and conventionals and FHA 203Ks. But then you have other realtors that are more investor-friendly who are used to working with hard money, capital partners, and things of that nature. So what kind of realtor would you say you are, Queen Molly? I'm uh, kind of interested in that. You know, I'm learning some tricks of the trade. I started with the homeowners, but I don't have patience for them. Sorry. Why? <laughs> Why you want to have the patience for the homeowners? What is it? Why you hating on the homeowners? You feel me? You know, they don't have the knowledge. They don't have the knowledge uh, of the investors and stuff like that. You know, it's they, nine times out of ten, it's their first rodeo. <laughs> I'm going the investment route. When I have big bank, I'll go back to the homeowners. Okay, okay, okay. Most definitely, most definitely. I was, I was just curious about that. I was just curious. Oh, but they think they know everything. Oh, really? Mm, that's interesting. I listen. When when I went through my process, um, I would just I would just happy to be getting something done. Now, the realtor that I use, because I'm in Florida too, the realtor that I use is a uh, homeowner friendly, uh, like a first time homeowner friendly realtor. Which I was, I got my uh, duplex through FHA. So, but he constantly closed on first-time homeowners, right? Now, over time, I kind of realized the type of investment that I was looking to do, or that I am looking to do now, is probably not going to come on the conventional side of things. It's probably going to come on the hard money side, the investor side of things basically, right? So it's probably gonna come hard money, capital partners, liquidating cards, things of that nature to get the next property. So, um, you know, they may not be as familiar with these processes or have all of the resources in place or the relationships in place to get the deal done efficiently and expeditiously as possible. But, you know, these are the things that I'm learning as well, too, when it comes to, you know, the real estate side of things. You know what I mean? Purchasing and acquiring property and the ways to do it. You know, you know, all the different methods are, um, you know, in elite, which, you know, you have access to. Lavish and Looney, what they do, King, what they do. Hey, y'all in Miami area, make sure y'all check out Lavish Studios right there next to Tootsie's. Off of 190, 183rd and 441 Lavish Studios. He got paintings, he does murals, he does tattoos. My whole sleeve is attributed to him, man. You feel me? He did all that. He did all that. Uh, hope y'all can see all that. But uh, yeah, 
Lavish and Looney. Lavish and Looney. You feel what I'm saying? Lavish and Looney. Uh, make sure y'all uh, follow him and do that. Uh, Workstrap Grind asked the question, Molly, do you have access to MLS? I do. She does have access. Tootsies. Uh, oh, you right up the street from Tootsies? Yeah, man. Make sure you go holler at Lavish and Looney, man. Make sure you go holler at him. 183rd, 441, right there on the corner. Uh, in, in the plaza right next to Tootsies, that green plaza. He got his own tattoo uh, studio in there. He does dope work. Like I say, man, he's... This arm, he only did one thing on this arm, but he did this whole sleeve. Like I say, he did, for the most part, this whole sleeve. That's him. That's him. That's him. That's him. That's Lavish and Looney, man. He's the real deal. He's the real deal. He did some other stuff as well, too. Uh, but I'm not finna goddamn strip and all that, take off my shirt. But yeah, he's the real deal. You feel what I'm saying? He's the uh, Basquiat of our generation. Real deal. He didn't have shit at Art Basel, jazz in the garden, paintings and shit. I got a painting too, but I got a one-on-one -on -one painting of his as well too. But I don't feel like going in the living room and shit. My daughter is content right now and not trying to steal the show. I'm going to leave her in there. Um, not really. Y'all doing y'all own thing in here. Not really at the moment I keep it. I keep it up because I know I'm going back to being active realtor. Oh, man, listen. How that works, drive grind, queen. Hey, listen, you get you a couple of dollars for that MLS access. You feel what I'm saying? It's all type of markets and it's all type of money out here. You feel what I'm saying? We making plays happen. We uh, uh, connecting the community and circulating this dollar off in here. Y'all know what that's about, man. We creating royalty through financial literacy. Black Lotus is the brand. Black Lotus is the lifestyle. The brand, the lifestyle, y'all know what it is. Health is wealth. We turning pennies into dollars, dollars into leverage, and leveraging our way to freedom. You know what I'm saying? Um, I digress from the uh, initial topic, though, which was basically like, man, comparison is the theft of joy. You know, comparison is the theft of joy. And we have uh, several examples in here how um, <clears throat> um, yeah you get some money with him queen you get some money with him for real for real uh, we got several examples in here how you could look at you know somebody situ somebody encouraged in your own situation we can't let that happen you know we could look at you know Lavish and Looney Studios and say hey I'm just starting my art uh, I want to be an artist or a graphic designer and look at him and say, oh, well, he's done had uh, clothing deals with uh, Little Bootsy or Rondé Gatston. He's done had work in, uh, he, he done had work in Jazz in the Garden, Art Basel. He done been commissioned to, to do, to paint at yacht parties. He got his own studio and, and, and comparing him to you just starting and get discouraged. You might be in a real estate game and just getting started learning your situation or studying for your realtor's license or just passed and, 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 and working out your situation. But you look at someone like Work Strive Grind, who the niggas pulling up in a Ferrari, the niggas pulling up in Maybachs. You might catch him on the yacht and, you know, you might catch him with fucking Grant Cardone type shit. And you like, damn, you looking at his shit and saying, well, shit, you feel what I'm saying? I, 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 I shouldn't even start or something like that. But these guys are on their chapter 10, 12, 15. They've been doing this for several years and you just starting. You can't compare their, their harvest season to your sowing season. You can't get discouraged on that. You know what I'm saying? You could use it as motivation, but you can't get discouraged at the place where they're at because they didn't start there. They didn't start there. You know, uh, Lavish, you know, I know, I, I know Lavish and Looney I don't know if he's still on here, maybe 20 years, right? And, you know, I don't want to put it out there like that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, I remember when he was doing T-shirts out of his crib, right? It was a time when I used to come to him because I was heavy, heavy doing my rap thing. When I went to BET 106 in Park, I was wearing... Uh, a lavish suit, uh, 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 one of his shirts, custom made. You know what I'm saying? That was in 03. 
long uh, long story short is what I'm saying is that he was he was working at Journeys riding on a scooter, doing shirts out of his crib. Now he pulling up in the big BMW and got his own spot. He done been to Art Basel and shit. But a lot of people not seeing that. Kai's an investor, what they do, queen, what they do. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I missed it. I missed the Soul Food Sunday yesterday. I was in transit. I'm sorry, queen. I did not catch it. You know, when you have it, I'm usually locked in with you. I apologize, queen. I missed out. And I heard you You had Queen Brandy Hayes on there, man. You feel me? Um, but make sure y'all follow the Kaizen Investor. Every Sunday, she does her Soul Food Sundays. She has a guest. And I'm going to have to call you, too, because, boy, you keep them guests rolling in, boy. You was... You was legit, boy. That conversation we had in D.C., man, you taking it to the next level, queen. I'm loving what you're doing. I'm loving what you're doing. I'm loving how you're building your platform and you're keeping the energy, you're keeping the guests rolling, man. It's very inspirational and inspiring. For the State's Elite family as well. Um, yeah, so we cannot, you know, we cannot look at, we cannot look at somebody else's harvest season and compare it to our sowing season. And guess who gave me that say, uh, that quote? Uh, you can't sow and harvest in the same season. The Kaizen investor. And, you know, now I'm using it as a topic. But, um, you know, comparison is the theft of joy. We cannot look at somebody else's chapter 10 and compare it to our chapter 1. You're going to get depressed. You're going to get discouraged. It's going to make you want to quit. And we can't, we can't do that. We can use it as motivation. But this Instagram is only showing the highlights. This is only showing the highlight reel. I can't name too many people who shows show, shows the bloopers. I want to say maybe Wall Street Trapper, if you've been following him this year. If you've been following him since the beginning of the year, you watched him, you know, actually working. He was going live, pulling up to work and stuff. But with the exception of him, and right now he's hot as fish grease. But with the exception of Wall Street Chopper, I can't think of too many people who show their bloopers. I can't really think of too many people. So remember, this Instagram is a highlight reel and it's used for business and motivational purposes as well too. Don't forget, this is a, we got to use this social media as a tool to better our position and create income and streams of income for ourselves and not just entertainment. Yep, a fabricated highlight reel. <laughs> uh fabricated. Um I wouldn't I wouldn't say fabricated queen. I would say that it's smoke and mirrors. I would say that, you know what I'm saying? The angles, the angles could be you know what I'm saying? Niggas, niggas know how to do the angles on this motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? People know how to do the angles. I wouldn't say it's fabricated, but it can be, you know, it can be shaped more like a snapshot of one aspect of their lives. <laughs> uh, so we don't, um, okay, so so do we feel like it's not people are not an open book on their platforms? Is that is that what y'all saying? People are not open books. Why show the bloopers when no one cares? People want to see the good shit. I disagree with that. I I, I respectfully disagree with that. Um, King works drive ground. I think that there are a faction of people who just want to see the good shit. But I feel that um, there are a lot of people, people love a come up story. People love a come up story. Another thing is people wanna feel at times connected and that they've grown with you. They've watched you grow. So there, I, I believe that there are people out there that wanna see you know, where you come from to connect with you and watch you grow or glow up, however you may put it. I want to see the real so I can learn from the mistakes, King. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like people really want to see, people really want to see the mistakes and 
and people want to know the downside. Like, for example, um, when I was posting, you know, money with my truck and stuff, you know, the settlements or whatever the money I was getting, people big that up. But you know what was the most interaction I got off my dually truck post was when I talked about when it got broken in in Dallas. You niggas in Dallas, boy, savage, savage. You feel me? When that, when I showed that my truck got broken in in Dallas, that got the most interactions. Honestly, you know, and a lot of people won't show that. You know, they'll just show the settlements or the trucks or whatever. But I showed, hey, my shit got broken into Dallas, and that shit ran me a, a bag to fix all my shit, whatever. Um, hold on, people, people are open books to what they want you to see. Not everything. I read somewhere that if someone uses all their Insta story allocations for the day, it's only a fluke in an hour of their actual day. Hmm. Interesting. Um, those are not the people that spend the money most of the time. Um, I'm going to disagree with that. I think I'm going to disagree with that statement as well. What they do, everybody chiming in. I'm, I think I'm going to disagree with that statement as well, too. Because, because, um, people, people like, uh, like I was saying, people like a come up story. People like a on the rise or on the verge thing. So I think there's a, a faction of people who would much rather support somebody up and coming opposed to somebody who's already made it. Now I think they both have their their different fan bases, right? You have a you have a fan base of individuals who want that result whether it's the lifestyle or whatever it is, the yachts, the, the private jets, the Lambos, whatever. They want that lifestyle, so they'll they'll purchase or spend money to buy into that lifestyle because they want those results. However, there's another faction of people that will buy into saying, okay, well, you know what? Now, it might be a different price point. So, but hey, I'm on the verge. I'm coming up. This is something that I have right here. And it may not be a high price point product like the person, you know, who has the lifestyle whose product may be a thousand or two thousand dollars. Whereas, the come up person might have a product that's ten dollars and they may get a lot more, you know, sales if that, you know, in that case. When I drive my Camaro, no one cares. But when I drive my high end cars, people spend money and want to know how I got there. I agree. Caribbean clean. Make sure y'all follow my guy Caribbean clean, man. Miami, Broward, Mobile Detailing, he's the real deal, and he's a legend, man. Make sure y'all follow Caribbean Clean. He gonna get y'all shit, you feel what I'm saying? Glass house type status, you feel me? Good service, great business, doing his thing. He also in the real estate game too, on the low, on the low. Um. So, um, yeah, so back to, uh, back to what I was... Uh, saying the work strive grind so i think it's two different customer bases and i think it's uh two different things that they that they're uh <laughs> oh my bad i didn't mean to let them know you was in the real estate game too my bad king uh i think it's two different two different uh customers and two different price points and two different things that they are uh, they're going after so the person who's coming up they may have a lower price point but people say hey you know I support you on your journey you know I'm interested in what you're doing or I just have bought into you so you know I'm willing to spend 20 30 dollars maybe right whereas somebody who you know has all the trinkets and stuff like that uh, they may have a product that sells for five hundred dollars a thousand dollars and people want those results and they purchased that product at a higher price point and bought into the results. I think that they both have their place and they both have their customer base. It, does that make sense? Where I'm coming from with that? Um, 
But I understand where you coming from though. Lifestyle definitely sells. So, you know, I understand when you say you pull up in the Camaro, you know, nobody don't really say nothing. You pull up in the Ferrari or something and now, you know, people move out the way. I get that. You know what I'm saying? I get that. But it's, um, you know, I think it's just two different things. You know, the, the come up story, you know, the, the, uh, the cars are an example. The cars are an example of already made it. So they haven't got that chance to see when you was working at the warehouse or, you know, you had a mouthful of goals in the dreads. Now you post those on Throwback Thursday, but imagine the people who was following you that whole time have been buying into your post to the people who just seen you now, in my opinion. Bloopers are good, but there's a reason why sports show highlights. You know, we always have these devil advocate uh, conversations. You know what I'm saying? We always have these devil advocate. I think everything has its own market, if you will. I honestly believe everything has its own market. And they have... um, you got to be real. It just, um, yeah. So I think, you know, everything ha- everything has its own market. You know what I'm saying? Um, and when you say got to be real, we are all multifaceted individuals. So what's real from what's not real? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, well, am I the dually guy? Am I the credit guy? Well, shit, the credit got me the dually. You know what I'm saying? Am I, you know, the father or am I the rapper? Well, I like to rap. If you watch my stories, I bust a couple flows. If, you know what I'm saying? You stream the music and, you know, shout out to everybody who do. I do all these things, so I'm multifaceted just like everybody else does. You know, work, strive, grind. He's into real estate, but he's also into exotic cars. You know what I'm saying? And that nigga likes cornflakes. I mean, frosted flakes, whatever them shits is. You get what I'm saying? Like, he's in a Lamborghini, buddy, from Carroll City. We all multifaceted. Um, show the failures too. Exact. People pay for real. They pay for the game. The highlights are for free. Mmm. Mmm. What they do, S. Francis? What they do, King? What they do? Um. Wow. You don't even like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> now they messing with your cereal. You feel what I'm saying? That, you know, that nigga, one time that nigga put a box of Fruit Loops on Insta stories talking about some health is wealth, Black Lotus, the brand of lifestyle, man. Get up out of here, man. Work, strive, ground. I'm talking to you. Red guy, I got my phone sideways. Hold on. Let me, let me do it like this so I can read it. Because you see I'm cocking my head to the side. I had it sideways. I feel you have to be real, especially if you're trying to sell. People want to see themselves in your position. You're, you are in driving luxury cars and whatnot. If they don't see you at the bottom, they won't. I can't take him seriously. They don't feel they can relate or be able to achieve what you did. Exactly. Okay, see? And this is what I'm saying. That's a that's a valid point. That's a valid point. So when you're in the Ferrari, people feel like that's far past their attainment at this particular level. So they relate more to somebody who might be catching the bus we're in that Camaro because that's more attainable than the Ferrari and they would buy into that. Different clientele base. Not really. Nobody want to see offsides, pass interference, holding calls. They want to see bombs. And Okay, so you're going to have to break that down a little bit because these are women that we're talking to and they may not be as versed in the football lingo like we are. So, you know, Caribbean clean, lavish and loony. They understand the football analogies, but the queens may not understand the football analogies. We want to see it. We want to see all of it. They want to see the ups and the downs. That's what they're saying. They want to see the ups and the downs, and that's the type of clientele that they are. The interception. We know football too. Excuse me. Excuse me, Queen Meticulous. 
the QB sack. See, so she's so she's saying she want to see the holding, the pass interference, the QB sack. I'm not saying everyone, 100%. I'm saying society. Looking into many different pieces and many different categories, and you know that's where marketing and targeting and all that stuff comes into place. But I feel like overall, um, I feel the. Ma- I feel like a good portion of people would much rather be with you on the the rise from the bottom opposed to people who are already there. You know, I think that the clientele that purchases from the people who are already there a lot of times are trying to get rich quick opposed to go through the process. Because if they're just seeing you today, for what they're thinking is you just got it overnight because they haven't been following you through the process, in my opinion. Let me turn this phone around again. Let me see. Comments is in here popping today. Uh, teams don't study their wins. They study their losses in the playroom. Hmm. People love a good come up story. The underdog coming out victorious and being able to see the highs and the lows. Hmm. Mm. It's not just me. It's just not just me giving giving you these objectives today. It's not just me. We go through this on the phone, but you see, we'll show all your bloopers and no one and see no one spend money with you. Everyone that has spent money on me or came to see me, it's been people that I met along the way. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Very interesting concept. Very interesting concept. So, so, I'm trying to see how I phrase this question, right? And this is going to go for Sunny Speaks and Meticulous, right? Because you want to see the come up. Now, a person coming up, if they have a product while they're in the process of coming up, are you more likely to spend money and support that product because you're with them on that, even though they're making mistakes? Or are you more likely to spend on with the individual who look like they've already figured out the process is my question. Um, what they do, uh, slick pick 24 just coming in. Well, sure, bloopers. Okay, let me put this back here. Hold on. Uh, nope, I ain't buying no waist trainer from a bitch I never seen in the gym. That's the thing. I agree, people love to come up story when you have made it. <laughs> so, 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 with that being said, depends on what it is. I'm not gonna let someone do my lashes if they fucking up i believe in the journey okay so can a person so so okay so we're gonna say a heavy set a heavy set individual who is like I'm on my journey, I'm on my weight loss journey, and you're following them. Then they start selling waist trainers and flat tummy tea, even though they're in the process of working out. Are you more likely to buy the waist trainer and flat tummy tea from the individual who's heavy, but they're in the gym working out? Or are you gonna buy it from, you know, the, the the sexy girl or something like that. I don't know. Let me see. Nobody cares about the journey until after they have seen the success. A great example is Darius Cooks. He built his following with his millions. Loopers is good, but people are looking for inspiration and motivation. Highlight. Hmm. <clears throat> yes, because they start challenges with their followers. Okay, so they create a community. They create a community around what they're doing. You know what? I'm going to create a pennies to dollars community. Goddamn. You understand what I'm saying? Because 
I be around these niggas with mansions and Ferraris, but I ain't got none. You feel me? We gonna start a pennies to dollars uh, community, goddamn. You feel me? What y'all think about that? <laughs> Real talk. We gonna, we gonna, I'm gonna start a pennies to dollars uh, Facebook group. And everybody's gonna be free to get in. And we're gonna share all these different ways to get in on a low cost entry. We talking about low cost dividend yields, low cost credit repair methods, all that good shit. You feel me? We gonna create, this. I'm gonna create that. Y'all with that? Put a thumbs up if y'all with that. We gonna create us a pennies to dollars uh, Facebook group. Pennies to dollars Facebook group. Y'all with that, put a thumbs up, man. We gonna do that. Uh, let me see. The highlights, now I'm, cock, I'm cocking my head to the side to see this. I don't feel like holding the phone. The highlights is what draws them in. The bloopers make them believers. Ah. Ah. Okay, so y'all down with that? Y'all down with that? All right now. Okay. So I'm going uh, I'm to I'm call it the, the Dojo Club or something like that. Pennies to Dollars Dojo Club or something like that. Um, y'all DM... I don't know how to do it on Facebook, like how to transfer it from YouTube, I mean, Instagram to Facebook. But y'all DM me, y'all DM me our Facebook information after this. Yeah, y'all DM me our Facebook information. I'm going to put y'all, I'm going to create a group, put y'all in it. I will be willing to learn if feel like the teacher is not a master and is also learning. Oh, I like that. I like that. <clears throat> I like that. So it's almost like everybody's learning together opposed to the master abbot sitting on, you know, levitating on top of the rock type shit. Like, yo, there's no way I'm going to be able to stand on my head like that nigga, right? Sonny, I understand how you feel and you see it, but not the mass majority of the people. I understand where he's coming from too, because... Sunny is not an ordinary individual. She's an extraordinary individual. The majority, everybody on here for the most part, I know for the most part. And I know you individually and I know like y'all are dope as shit. Y'all are not just average people. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have great things that y'all are doing, products that y'all promoting. Y'all doing big things. So y'all not ordinary people. I don't spend my money with people like, <laughs> who is like, who is like that? <laughs> Who is like that? You don't spend your money with people like who? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> she, she don't spend her money with hardly nobody. I was telling her about a course uh, the other day. Like, yo, it's this course. It's talking about this, da 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 da. It's this much money. Now, granted, the course was a couple racks. She's like, fuck that. I'm not spending. I'm not spending no racks on that shit. I'll fuck around and take the time to learn it myself. Damn, <clears throat> Instagram giving me two minutes. Time has been flying, y'all. Hold on, let me see. People that I have bought from on Instagram, I'm like, I like them as a person. People buy you flaws and all. Even Home Depot lied to get to where they are. They had empty boxes to make it look like they had a lot of inventory, but the warehouse was empty as fuck. They told the story after they made it. We're rock stars without guitars. You already know it. You already know it, man. You already know it. Um, <clears throat> everyone does that. Hey, y'all make sure y'all DM me y'all Facebook information so I can add y'all to the group. You feel me? My Instagram, my, my uh, Facebook is Black Lotus Tray, T-R-E. But y'all DM me y'all Facebook information so I can put everybody into the group. Um, I got a minute left. Y'all could have been anywhere in the world, but y'all here with me. I hope y'all enjoyed this Mindset Monday. Comparison is the uh, the death of joy. I think some, some shit like that. Just don't compare yourself with somebody doing way better and get depressed on that shit. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, Black Lotus, the brand of lifestyle. Pennies of dollars, dollars to leverage. Leverage your way to freedom. A hey, Cyber Monday going on. Dooley Dojo. Uh, Dollar Dojo in there. <clears throat> um, you know what it is You stream the music You purchase the merchandise You support me You book a consultation Purchase a book You uh, invest in yourself Thank y'all I'm definitely gonna save this 
I hope y'all enjoyed it. Make sure y'all DM me y'all Facebook information. I'll put y'all in the group, Pennies to Dollars group. You feel what I'm saying? And we're going to take this to the next level. Thank y'all. I'm see y'all next week. Same place, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yo.